Moments away from Patrick Chan's return to the national championships with his good buddy Elaj Balde. Another good buddy is Scott Moyer who caught up with Patrick yesterday at the Nova Scotia Hall of Fame. Patrick Chan. How's it going, buddy? Good. Good, dude, good. Good, good? That's it? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> <laughs> this is your big comeback season. It's the first time you've competed since the Olympic Games. Why did you come back? What's the reason? Um, maybe at first people might think, and including myself, thought that it's... I had something... I want to I wanna go back to the Olympics and win gold because mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance. And yeah. um, I won everything up leading up to the Games and, and just missed it. And... Uh, and that was probably my initial idea for the first six months during my year off and um, just to take some time and I didn't really want to do a full four years. That's a lot of training at you know, this, the last four I would go for. Um, so I wanted to take my time, take the rest and yeah, for sure I came back. I was like, I want to go for gold. You have seven national championships under your belt. What does nationals in Halifax 2016 mean to you? Yeah, that's a good question. I, going through this Grand Prix season has been tough. Um, lots of ups and downs and frustration. Lots of fights between me and Kathy and <laughs> me and me and uh, and just me and the competitors. Just uh, looking at how far they've come in that, that past year that I didn't compete. Uh, I feel like I'm just trying to catch up at this point. And to be now chasing as opposed to being the leader, it's a very, very hard position to be in. Now I'm like your older brother, okay? So <laughs> I can Definitely. give you a little bit of a different perspective. You, <clears throat> Halifax Nationals, the last time that you competed at Nationals and didn't win was here in Halifax. Absolutely, Do you yeah. think about that? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all. Um, I mean, you were 15 or exactly. something. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and looking back at 15 and thinking, you know, I'm sure I thought I knew everything at that time, and I really didn't. And uh, now being 25 and uh, having experienced what I've experienced, two Olympics and seven national titles, I mean, that's just like so much knowledge and experience from uh, having been with an older brother <laughs> who's taught me oh, so God. much and good and bad and also <laughs> now being in your shoes almost and here like with Nam and Roman coming up and um, so it's it's a it's so crazy to just sit in the change room and realize that or at dinner and be like wow I'm the oldest now here when I was always the youngest yeah. it's it's uh, I have to pinch myself all the time <sighs> wish you good luck buddy can't wait Thanks. to see you we think you'll get that title again <laughs> <laughs> don't let Nam make that thing from you get it back <laughs> thanks buddy love you buddy National champions and I uh, are championships, and I am joined by speaking of champions, Olympic world Canadian champions, Tessa Virtue, Scott Moyer. You saw Patrick Chan tonight, a brilliant performance. He's back. Everywhere I've been here in Halifax, the buzz is out. Our Virtue and Moyer are coming back. Uh, can you uh, <laughs> shed some light on that, please? I know you <laughs> don't want to talk about with it. That question. <laughs> Tough questions with Brian. Um, I, we haven't heard too many of those whispers, but. Uh, you know what, it's the, the great thing about being here is the focus is really on the athletes that are on the ice this week and uh, of course we'd love to be back skating but it takes a whole lot of work and uh, it looks like the ice dance uh, discipline is in pretty good hands. As you watch it though, what struck you with Patrick's performance? Is it the mental preparation, physical preparation? What is it, Tessa? Well, Brian, you talked about him being the hunter, and there's a difference in that approach. I think it must be refreshing for him uh, to sort of come in and not really have anything to lose. I mean, he may feel he has something to prove, but people are just happy that he's back and he's attacking programs like the way he did tonight. It felt like he was calm, confident, and his training really spoke volumes. And I think something with a comeback, half of it's mental. And like Tessa said, his approach seemed fresher and it seemed like um, he had a better chance of success tonight. You know, he really commanded the ice, commanded the building. It was the Patrick Chan of old. All right, I'm sure you're inspired though. You won't say yes, you won't say no, but when you look at that, you say, you know, this might not be a bad idea. Boy, folks. are we ever going to be good in shows now. <laughs> right. You're broadcasters. Uh, you've been doing features here. Uh, what's it been like? 
It's been thrilling. We love getting an insight into the athlete's mindset heading into a competition, and I feel like we can understand the pressure. We're so fresh out of it, so we can put ourselves in their shoes and sort of, I love being able to chat with them and say, you know, listen, really, how are you feeling? And how, how does this, you know, change from a nationals to world championships? It's been really um, a pleasure to chat with our friends and peers. Well, I know you did a feature with uh, Megan DeHamel, uh, DeHamel, Eric Radford. Uh, you've done a lot of features. You may not come back to skate, but you'll be back here working tomorrow. Tell me about spending time with the skaters. Well, I mean, that is what has been really fun to us. I mean, we were on teams with almost every skater here that's probably in the top three on the senior level. So to be able just to chat with them, hopefully we get a little bit more of a relaxed athlete and they get to tell their story, you know. Kind of being on this side shows us how what an opportunity it is to be on TV, be able to tell your story and connect with Canadians. Because after all, Canadian skating fans are some of the best in the world. And, uh, you know, what an honor it is to be able to represent Canada. So tell your story to Canadians. Get in their living room and become a part of their life. It was a thrill working with you in Vancouver. Doesn't seem like six years. Great to be working with you here in Halifax. We'll see more of you. Tessa Virtue, Scott Moyer tomorrow. We go to break. We'll go backstage still to come. Megan DeHamel, there's Eric Radford, there's Megan. The short program for pairs as we continue live from Halifax on this Friday night. Guess what, folks? The season's only just begun. Can you improve on perfect? Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero, they're still so raw, still so new. They've become fan favorites already. They are building in the right direction. So Megan and Eric, you're chasing your fifth national title. Are you conscious of the elite company you're keeping? Does that play on your mind at all? Uh, actually, a few years ago, we were curious what the record was of Canadian titles, and so we went back and looked with one of the researchers, and um, we had found that a lot of very great, iconic Canadian pair teams have won five national titles. Uh, and it's unbelievable that hopefully our name will be joining them. How do you compare your mindset at this competition here at Nationals versus World Championships in a few months? Coming back to Halifax specifically, and especially the Canadian Championships, almost feels like coming home. Mm -hmm. um, we've spent a lot of time in this arena, as you know, doing uh, mm -hmm. you know shows and other competitions, and that sense of being at home and having the entire audience behind you is like you know it's a little bit different than when you're at the World Championships and you're against other countries and not everybody is necessarily on your team, <laughs> right? So. But um, it's, it's exciting. Every competition has its own unique sort of flavor, and it's just really nice to be back at home for this one. How do you unwind and decompress? Uh, for me, it's definitely uh, Netflix, uh, <laughs> my piano, Friends. Any particular movies, show you're into or series? Uh, Parks and Rec. Okay. And Making a Murderer. Ooh, I everyone's could talking about not that. stop watching that show, it's fascinating. <laughs> And Megan? Um, I like to play with my dog. I have a dog and cat at home, um, and I'm really into yoga. How do you explain your partnership and what makes it special? I think from the very beginning, uh, Megan and I have just had a natural, unspoken connection. We'll go into the rink and we'll be really nervous, and we won't have to even tell one another. Like, mm -hmm. we just know, and mm -hmm. the day that we're like, we feel really good, we both feel really good. We're mm -hmm. never. We're never opposites, and I think that you know we've been through so much together. We understand each other, and I think that through it all, it's still remained special to us. It's never become monotonous or boring. It's been fun every single day. We've had our ups and downs. It hasn't always been easy, but you know, as much as we've accomplished, I think we still look forward to the future and everything that we've yet to accomplish. Well, the fans are looking forward to the future as well. Good luck mm -hmm. this week. Thank you. Thank you.